today and always in your mighty name, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. So this morning I would like to share to you all about the importance of love. The importance of love. Let's take a few moments or a few minutes to consider the importance of love. And this importance of love is spoken by God himself. I know that we hear about this word love being thrown around many times and very often we take it for granted. We ignore it, it gets pushed aside and it goes unnoticed from many. You might even think you've heard so many sermons about love before, so what's new? Well, I can agree with you on that. Perhaps you're not going to hear anything new from me today. But standing here before you all is already an act of my love for God, ensuring that his sheep are well fed with his spiritual word. I mean, no offense, Pastor Sani. I mean, you are doing a very great job in teaching us to live out our faith in God. And I'm grateful for that. But opportunities like this, they don't come very often. We must always be quick to grab and treasure any God-given opportunities if we genuinely love God. In saying that, it doesn't hurt also to be reminded about our faith, amen? Like the apostle Paul mentioned, faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word of God. Let the Lord speak to your heart today and let him show you something about the importance of love in your own life. So our reading is taken from the book of Mark, chapter 12, verse 28 to 34. Mark chapter 12, verse 28 to 34. And it says, One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one answered Jesus is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding and with all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. This event happened at the time before Jesus was crucified. In the preceding verses that's found in verse 13 to 17, as Jesus moves closer to the cross, he finds himself under attack by certain religious Jews who want to see him dead. The Pharisees and the Herodians are two different groups. They are enemies. They came together to ask Jesus a question about their ownership. This is referring to themselves paying imperial tax to Caesar. Now, in your, when you go home in your own time, you can read, go back and read from the beginning of that chapter. So they failed to accomplish their purpose but Jesus used the occasion to embarrass them publicly. When the Sadducees saw their enemies had failed to trap Jesus in his words, they came to the Lord with a much harder question. They believed they could embarrass him again by asking him a difficult one. And that's found in verse 18 to 27. That is the question about marriage at the resurrection. Again, you can go back and you'll find that in verse 18 to 27. But God rebuked them and didn't fall for their trap either. He exposed the hypocrisy and they too were publicly embarrassed. So this now brings us to the focus point of our message this morning. 
in verse 28 to 34, while Jesus was speaking with the Sadducees, a man was listening in on their conversation. The man was a Pharisee and he was a scribe. This scribe was amazed by Jesus' answer that he gave to the Sadducees. And he, he had a question on his mind as well that he wanted to ask the Lord. And he said, of all the commandments, which is the most important? In this encounter, Jesus is asked a very important question. His answer to that question gets right to the heart of what it means to be saved and what it means to worship. What Jesus had to say to this man has much to say to us today. The truth in these verses teach us how God expects us to live out our lives, both vertically and horizontally. These verses teach us how we are to respond to God above and to our fellow humans all around us. So what is so important about this love that we must know about? What is so important about this love that God is talking about that we must know about? Well, number one, we must know that God is the creator of love. God is the creator of love. Verse 29, the most, and this is Jesus speaking, the most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. This is the importance of this commandment. When Jesus answered this man, he didn't just want the scribe to know about the greatest commandment, but Jesus wanted him to acknowledge first that the Lord is God alone. Nothing more, nothing less. The truth is simple. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. We were all created by the one and only God. This world was formed by the hands of the one God. Jesus Christ is that one God we must worship and adore. Amen? You see, this is one of the greatest benefits of knowing God. And I want you to take note of this because this is very important. The one greatest benefit of this, of knowing God, is the moments you acknowledge and accept that he is your Lord, you become part of his family forever. Amen? Your name will be written in a book of eternal life in heaven. You will become one of the many of his family of angels in heaven. Friends, do you believe and acknowledge this truth about your creator? When you know the truth of who the creator of love is and what he has done for you in the past and present, then you are certain and open to his word that he alone is love. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 to 8, it says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, but because God is love. When Jesus gave this man an answer, it wasn't an empty answer. It's an answer that is full of knowledge and wisdom. An answer that will calm a storm. A recognized storm amongst the Jewish leaders who thought they had Jesus on the edge of his seat, asking many difficult questions for Jesus to answer. But Jesus being Jesus, he stood his grounds and he says it how it is. He would openly speak his mind about the truth without worrying about anyone's opinion. None of your opinions matter to God. None of my opinions matter to God. I don't know about you and the storms you are facing right now in your life. I mean, 
It could be the coronavirus storm like Pastor Sandy was sharing about just not long ago. Or missing out on toilet rolls. I mean, come on. <laughs> this world has gone crazy, right? But this is how people act when they don't know, when they don't have the hope of God. However serious your storms may be or whatever it may be, I don't know. All I know is that God is the creator of love and he loves us. He created love to be seen through us, the carriers and believers of his salvation. So instead of you worrying about being a carrier of the coronavirus, your first response should bring you to your knees that you are a carrier of God's perfect plan and love for the world to see. Amen? Only God himself can deliver you from your storms. You see, God's love shows up and arrives at the right time whenever we call on him. This man wanted to know God's heart about this particular issue that they were having amongst his friends. They were fighting about, you know, which was the best law or, or in the law of Moses. And indeed, God revealed his heart to him with a righteous answer. Like many of us, we have searched around for answers to our storms from people and material things of this world, and yet it never satisfies us, but it always makes us thirsty and hungry for more. But with the Creator's love, we are rest assured we will not be thirsty or go hungry again. God's words are true and never fails. Trust in the love and care of your Creator when he answers you. He knows what's best, what's best and good for you. God never seeks to find faults in us, which man does all the time. God never counts or keeps records of the many times we have fallen short of his glory. We must then be alert and be wise to know of this important truth about love because God always answers us with love. The scribes loved to debate the law. They were constantly trying to figure out which command was the most important. Besides this, they spent considerable time trying to come up with clever and one sentence summaries in the law. Like many of us, or many people, they still try to play with the word of God. They love to argue about the Bible. They love to devise riddles and puzzles based on the Bible. They try to figure out what they can and can't get away with according to the Bible. People are always looking for a loophole. Which brings me to my second point. We must know that God is the founder of love. He is not only the creator of love, but he is the founder of love. Verse 30 and 31. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your strength your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. God points us directly to the cross where it all started. So we are seeing this from behind the scenes. So it's almost like watching a movie from behind, you know, instead of the front, you're seeing it from behind the scenes. So he wants us to see this from behind the scenes in understanding why he made this as one of the greatest commandments. So get this, Jesus found love in God, which therefore made him obedient and surrendered to the will of his Father. If Jesus did not love God the Father, we would not be sitting in this room today. We have to understand God found a perfect way and a perfect person to perform this love, and that was his only son, Jesus Christ. In John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God found that love in his son Jesus as a sacred sacrifice for all to know and be reminded about his love day after day. 
This is where the foundation of our understanding and thoughts about love should come to play. When we read these verses as Jesus answered this man, of course Jesus didn't go into details on explaining to this man about why a person, a person should love this way. But Jesus was painting an image in his mind of the love that God has for a person when it comes to loving. As followers of Jesus Christ, we should already know about this love of God. Jesus underwent every unfair treatment, pain and suffering, just so we may know of God's great love. It is a love that is unconditional, perfect, eternal and changeless. It is utterly an unselfish love. It is love that gives itself away with the expectation of nothing in return. This is the kind of love that caused Jesus to, co to go to the cross to give himself for us. In other words, we are to love him like he loves us. This love is possible, but only because he loved us first. We love because he first loved us. We cannot truly love the Lord until we see him as Lord. We do not truly love him until we have surrendered all to him and acknowledge that he is our master and we are his slaves. This is a call for a life of absolute submission and surrender. Jesus says to his disciples in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. When we have this knowledge of the foundation of love, there should be no problem as well in loving others around us and especially loving God with full submission to his will. We should all strive to be in a saving relationship with our God Almighty. He is not your God until you have surrendered to him and believed the gospel for your salvation. Is he your God today? It is not enough for him to be your father's God or your mother's God or your children's God. He must be your God. You cannot love him until you know him personally. Let's look at verse 30 and 31 in our Lord's answer, phrase by phrase. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart. The word heart refers to the core of our physical beings. The very core of our being should beat with love for God. When we love him with all our heart, loving him in every other areas of our lives will be no problem. I say it again. When we love him with all our heart, loving him in every other areas of our lives will be no problem. Our love for him should be an emotional love. That is, we should not be ashamed to express our love with the emotions we have deep within our soul. We can shout, we can cry, we can testify, we can do anything. These are all emotions. They are all emotional manifestations of our love for the Lord. And this is what it means to love him with all our soul. Loving the Lord is a decision we make within ourselves. I believe that each one of us seated here today in this room we all have experienced the love of God in many different ways. And from that experience, we are all capable of loving him in return. To know and accept that God is the founder of love is a decision we make wisely. We either choose to love him with all our souls or we choose to hold back our love from him. Love the Lord with all your mind. As we understand who God is, as he revealed in his word, we respond to that truth by focusing the power of the intellect to worship him and to love him. And to love him with all your strength, it speaks of our might, our power, our abilities. Every ability, every gift, every talent, 
Every strength is to be mobilized for God. We are to love God with the entirety of our beings. The Lord has given us perfect and complete love. He loves us with all he has. We are to love him the same way. When the Lord possesses a person, he also possesses all that person has. Everything that you own, everything that you have now, you know that God, it all belongs to God. We are to use every fiber and molecule of our being for his glory. This is what it means to love him. When we have the image of God's love for us on the cross, this is already enough for us to humble and raise our love towards him through praise and worship. But some of us, we don't see that love of Christ. Some of us, when we are in this room, we just, we tend to stand there and put our hands in our pockets. We fold our, our arms. Where is the love in that? Where is the love of God in that? Keeping our hands to ourselves. That's, that's saying I'm selfish. I, I don't believe that God, I, everything I have on me, the life, that, the air that I'm breathing right now is from God. It means if you are standing like this in praise and worshiping, when you worship God, it means that you are not surrendering anything to Him. That you are relying on your own strength. You will find that your faith is turned around, transformed, lifted, and complete when you fully love God with all of yourself. After all, it is your heart that matters most to God. The person who truly loves the Lord is the person who fully trusts God and obeys the Lord in every area of his or her life. The person who truly loves the Lord is the person who fully trusts God and obeys the Lord in every area of his or her life. It is the idea of total commitment and total surrender. This is genuine love for the Lord. Do you have that love in you? Do you have that love in you? Loving the Lord like we should is the, primary, is the primary commandment of the law. If we can keep this commandment, we will have no problem with the rest. The second commandment builds on the first one. The scribe had not asked about anything beyond the first commandment, but Jesus goes a step further in answering this man to teach us the truth that genuine love for God also manifests itself in perfect love for others. Verse 31, it says, the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. This means that I am to love others with the same kind of love with, with which God has loved me. I am to love them unconditionally perfectly, eternally, and with purity. So who is my neighbor? You might ask, who is my neighbor? Well, Jesus answered this question in the parable of the Good Samaritan, and I'm sure this story is very familiar with some of us. And that's found in Luke chapter 10, verse 30 to 37. In your own time, you can read that when you get home. But for the sake of time, we just, I just want to move on. So Jesus is saying in that, in that story, he says, my he's referring to my neighbor is not just a person who is my friend. He is not just a person who looks like me or who runs in my circle. According to Jesus, my neighbor is anyone who wears a suit of skin. Love your neighbor as yourself. Everyone in this room loves themselves, amen? amen? So when self is hungry, what do we do? We find it something to eat. So when self is thirsty, we find it something to drink. When self gets sick, we get medication. In other words, we always seek to meet the needs that pertain to self. Jesus said in his word, we are to love those around us with the same kind of love. 
This does not mean that we love them with a mere sentimental or emotional love. No. We are to love them with a love that actively seeks their good. We are to do more than talk about love. We are to demonstrate genuine love to those who live around us. 1 John chapter 3, verse 17 to 18 says, If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is why it's very important for us to understand this kind of love. Because it is seen in the Lord Jesus who willingly gave himself for us. If we loved like this, there would be no problem in this church, the home, or the community. Love would solve the problems and meet the needs that exist all around us. We need to stop trying to please God by ourselves by our self-righteous deeds, and by our religious works. We need to learn to love him with all our hearts, with all our soul, with all our minds, with all our strength, and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Getting those two things right will change our churches, our homes, our communities, and our world. When all the veneer is ripped away, all of our problems and our sins, our sins, can be traced to a lack of genuine love for God and for our fellow man. The question we face is what are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? Are we going to continue as we are or are we going to come before the Lord and seek his help to love like we are commanded to love? God is a spirit and he is only approached by a heart that is filled with love for him. When his love touches us and draws us to him, we are able to return that love and we are able to live out that love in obedience to God and in service to others. So how is your relationship with God today? If it is all it should be, you love him with all your heart and your soul and your mind and your strength. And you love others as you love yourself. Is that true about you? Is that true about you? Or do you need to make improvements in that area of your life? Or are you still doubting the love of God for you? Before I go any further, I would like to leave you with a short video. Now this video, I came across this video when I was preparing this message and I feel that this is God guiding me, that he wanted you to see this. It is a love letter written by God himself. It is based on the truth and power of his word for us to believe and hopefully change those fears and doubts we may hold against him. So I'll let you watch the video and then we'll continue on. How amazing is God's love? Regardless of your age, your sins, or your past, he will receive you, forgive you, love you, and save you from this broken world if you will come to him. Now, I don't know about your heart. I don't know about what you're going through. But I know you need Jesus. If he has spoken to you on any level today, please surrender now and submit to his will and do business with him today. The importance of love is in Jesus Christ, the Father, who is both the creator and founder of love. Receive him as your Lord and savior, believe in his salvation for all, 
and you will find that loving him with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength will be made possible. Love also your neighbor as you love yourself, for these are the greatest commandments that God has spoken. Amen. Let's end. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we are so grateful and thankful, O oh Lord, that we came to know, Lord Father God, about your love. Thank you for your son, Jesus, who has died on the cross, Lord Father, in showing us that love, Lord. And truly, Lord Father, it is only in you, Lord, that we can...